Hi friends, Mrs. Harris here. Today's I Can statement is, I can create space in an artwork through the use of foreground, middle ground, and background while working on a flat piece of paper. Using this technique creates the illusion of space. Notice how things get lighter. Here we have Starry Night from 1889 by Vincent van Gogh. You can see how he used the three parts of the picture plane. Artists have used this technique for a long time. Here's a painting from 1871. Is that orchid really bigger than the tree? Notice how bright the orchid is. That's because the orchid is in the foreground, making it bigger than the tree. But the artist has created the illusion of depth. How does the artist show that some objects are further away than others in this painting from 1639? In this painting, notice where all the detail is. It's up in the foreground, closest to us, where it's going to be clearer. As things move away, it gets less clear, just like in real life. This is six techniques that you are going to use. Overlapping, shading, placement, size, value, and linear perspective to create the illusion of depth within your image. Now you ask yourself, what are we making, Mrs. Harris? We're making a cat and a dog origami. What is origami? Origami is the Japanese art of paper folding. Ora is the Japanese word for folding, and gami is the Japanese word for paper. I'm going to show you how to create a dog and a cat out of paper. The paper has to be a perfect square. We're going to be working with 6 by 6 inch squares or 4 by 4 inch squares, depending on what size animal you want to make. Your animal has to have a profession. Maybe it'll be a judge, a teacher, an artist, a musician, whatever you want. Origami is always so much fun. You're always gonna start with a perfect square. This is a six by six, and this is a four by four perfect square, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. This you can make an adult, and this you could make a child if you wanted to. So let's simply start by folding our paper in half. And again, we're going from corner to corner. We're not doing halvesies this way. We're going corner to corner, so we created what's basically called a triangle. I'm gonna flip these up. If I make them even like this, I lose my dog ears or my cat ears. But right now I'm making a cat, so I want them to pop up over here. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side for my cat ear. Flip it over, you can begin to see the cat, but I'm gonna take this and just fold it down and give it kind of like a flat head. And there we go, we've got a cat. To do a dog, it's gonna be very similar. You're gonna fold it again in that triangle shape. You are going to flip these over. The only difference is this is the front of your dog. The dog has the ears that are kind of um, droopy over it. And then you can take this piece and fold it back into its chin. Okay. So that's how you're going to create it. If you wanted to create a small child in your picture, you can have one or two. It doesn't have to just be one person in it. Remember when you're choosing your profession, try to pick something that your neighbor isn't doing. Or if you're at home, try to pick something that's relevant. Maybe what mom or dad do. That might be kind of fun. And I'm going to make this one a little cat. So I'm going to take these ears and flip them. And I'm going to take this and fold it down and then it would be on this side. Then what we would do from here is we would begin to decorate it, and I'm gonna go ahead and put some circle eyes on there, big black pupils inside. I'm gonna give this kitty kind of a triangle-shaped nose, and then I can make it a happy cat. There's a couple of different ways to make the faces on these animals. Again, you can do a circular nose. You can have it kind of a frowny dog, more of a serious cat or dog. Dogs, you might put some freckles around by its um, snout. Or you can do something that looks like this, the letter T. So it's kind of just a little bit serious again. This guy looks sad. I kind of prefer the happy one. But there's lots of different sizes, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with them. All right, so at school, the kids are going to get a sheet of paper. It's going to be 10 by 16. They can use it horizontally or they can use it vertically. You could attach your cat like this or you could even do it here. Uh, maybe you want again, like I said, to have two people. What you want to do is decide where you're going to put these animals on your paper. And what the way we're going to attach them at school is I'm going to come around and I'm going to staple them on. At home, you might use glue 
If you have a stapler, you can use a stapler. So I'll put this one here. You have to kind of think about what profession you're doing so that you know where to place them, you know, so you have a good idea. Now, one way that I start this is I will start, and again, I'm gonna draw a little bit darker than normal. And again, we're gonna do a lot of overlapping because that's what we're trying to do. In our picture, we have to show a foreground, middle ground, and background. And to create the illusion of depth, we're gonna be overlapping things. So if I start drawing my person, a lot of times I'll just start right away with a stick figure now that we know isn't going to work because it's not what it, you know it's not thick enough so then i'll go into my simple shapes i'll create my rectangles for arms and I, if i create a rectangle for a body he's way too skinny so i'm going to do more of a square and again this is not good yet i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to bend my cat's arms so maybe it's going down. I haven't picked a profession for this one yet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some legs on there. Now the legs are too short for the body, so I'm gonna change it up a little bit. And again, I'm sketching lightly. That's the easiest way to do this. The shoulders are gonna come across here. He's gonna have a small neck. And you're gonna to begin to see that I've got a person here in just a minute, or a cat person. And then here's my person. And again, I sketch really um, lightly, but I do a lot of sketching. That's the way I like to do things. So this would be the beginning of it. What would I go in black outline? I'm just gonna black outline the outside of the cat itself, the body. What a lot of kids like to do is they like to put paws on their cat. So you could do that. Instead of trying to put hands, you can put paws. All right, I'm gonna have to do some erasing because I've made quite a big mess out of this. Notice how I'm lifting it up so it goes underneath it. And then I would draw a body for this one. Let me show you one that I've been working on so you can really see what you're gonna be expected to do. So here's one. Here's one, you can see the top of it up here. You can see how I've got a sun and he's holding balloons. And as you, if you look, my clown is a dog. Um, and you can see how it goes back in space. I've got things overlapping. Here's some silhouettes of some trees in the background. It's overlapping a tent. The tent has gotten smaller as it goes further back. That's part of the trick to make things look like there's perspective in there. The other thing that I've got going here is it's up higher. It's not even with this one. If I put this little tent down here, it wouldn't look correct correct. It would look like it was for a little kitty cat or something. But again, these are dog and cat people. When we start to add color to this, I'm going to ask you guys to use your crayons because I think you're going to have more success using crayons than you would if you used colored pencils. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to begin to color this. I'm not going to color this entire tent uh, red because again I've created stripes so I need to color those stripes in. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it red and white. So I'm going to be right back with that. All right, I'm not going to finish coloring this because it's going to take too long, but I want you to remember to mix your colors together even with crayons. When you go to do the sky, please remember that the sky is going to come all the way down. You'll start it up here and the sky is going to come all the way down and it's going to touch down here where the trees meet. It's not gonna be left white. When I'm doing my sun, for example, I could get different colors of orange in here and I could create kind of like a tie-dye effect. Maybe I'll finish that so you guys can see that. All right, now you can see how I've kind of mixed my colors in here. Again, the sky goes from the top of the paper all the way to the edge of the horizon line where I've got my silhouette of my trees. One way to color your dog in and not get it on the background is to put a scrap piece of paper underneath it. And I'm not gonna color in the hat brown because it's just the dog is gonna be brown. And again, this really helps to keep the color on your origami paper. Some kids choose to color it first before it is attached, but typically I'm running around in class and I'm attaching them prior to them being able to add color to them, so. And this line right here is coming from this fold line right here, so you have to be real careful. I'm gonna just try to make it go away the best I can, try to keep that color consistent. 
and then you can see how the dog is brown. So I can't wait to see what profession you pick.